mongrel mob notorious president, Sonny Smith, who was a key figure in a controversial methamphetamine rehabilitation scheme, has passed away on Thursday 30th of June 2024. As news broke at 9 a.m. on Thursday, May 30, 2024, a large group of mongrel mob members arrived at Hawke's Bay Hospital, where it is believed Smith was receiving treatment for a terminal illness. Tributes for Sun Dog Notorious, the president and national head of the mongrel mob's notorious chapter, began flooding in on various social media platforms, including Facebook, YouTube, TikTok, and Instagram. Mob members, family, friends, and supporters alike shared heartfelt messages, photos, and videos, celebrating his life and leadership. People shared stories and personal experiences that illustrated how he positively affected the community and individual lives. These accounts emphasized his significant influence and how much he will be missed now that he is gone. The outpouring of respect and remembrance demonstrated the deep bond within the group and the significant mark he left on those who knew him. More than 1,000 mongrel mob members arrived in Waipawa in Central Hawks Bay over King's birthday weekend for the funeral of Sonny Smith. The service cumulated on 4th of June 2023, with the funeral procession and burial held at Marai Street, in Waipawa. Smith was interred in a purpose-built mausoleum at the Marai, along with his treasured Harley-Davidson motorcycle. There were increased mongrel mob numbers in Hawks Bay, particularly in Napier, Hastings, and Waipawa, where Smith lived. Huge convoys were seen traveling from various locations around the North Island, converging on different roads leading to and through Hastings, heading towards Waipawa. The sight of cars and motorbikes moving in large, organized groups was reported by numerous onlookers. The convoys, made up of mongrel mob members and supporters, showcased their solidarity and respect as they journeyed together to pay their respects to Sun Dog Notorious. The impressive scale of the procession highlighted the strong sense of community and unity within the group. A sea of mongrel mob vests, patches, red clothing, and flags adorned the participants, creating a powerful visual tribute that showed a deep loyalty and brotherhood within the organization. The mood was serious and respectful as everyone came together to mourn and honor their fallen leader. Smith was a key figure in the Kaokura program, a live-in project at Teiperu Marai aimed at helping people with trauma and drug problems. Invitations to the program's launch were signed by Smith and his wife, Mahina Arangi. The program included activities both at and away from the Marai, such as gardening at Smith's house, working out at a gym, morning walks along the Mataka River, fishing trips in Napier Harbor, and attending meetings in Hastings. This was a Marai-based rehabilitation initiative designed to improve health and well-being and prevent suicide and further harm through addressing drug addiction predominantly methamphetamine, and supporting trauma recovery for hard-to-reach Maori communities. 
Kao Kura utilized a combination of Maori healing and clinical therapeutic practices. It was grounded in a holistic understanding of Maori health of it recognizing the multiple dimensions of well-being. The program was run by an organization called Hard to Reach, of which senior mongrel mob member Harry Tam is a director. The Ministry of Health applied for funding after Hard to Reach requested support to work with various mongrel mob chapters, following a successful pilot that year. Prime Minister Ardern, along with Ministers Grant Robertson, Poto Williams, and Chris Fafoy, approved nearly $3 million from the proceeds of Crime Fund for this program. The National Party who were in opposition at that time criticized the funding. Sonny Smith, a lifelong mongrel mob member, was the president of the gang's notorious chapter in Central Hawks Bay. He was jailed in 2010 after being found guilty of attacking a fellow senior gang member so badly that he suffered brain damage. He was found guilty and was sentenced to eight years jail for wounding with intent to cause grievous bodily harm. Smith was released on parole in January 2013. In 2021, a stun gun constructed to look like a torch was found in the bedside drawer of his Waipawa home during a police search on February 10. It led to Smith appearing in the Waipukarau District Court where he denied knowledge of the item. Judge McIntosh characterized the offense as relatively minor and noted that Smith had not been in trouble for a long time. As a result, Smith was convicted but received a six-month suspended sentence, meaning he would not have to serve time in prison unless he committed another offense within that period. Additionally, the judge ordered the weapon involved in the offense to be destroyed. Smith's funeral ceremony was marked by motorcycle revving, traditional haka performances, and passionate chants as Smith's gang-affiliated comrades bore his casket to his final resting place. Police had been monitoring movements and proceedings surrounding the funeral since last week, which involved observing numerous patched members moving through different parts of Hawke's Bay. Police officers were deployed in force including a police helicopter which played a crucial role in monitoring the road network, remaining stationed in the Hawke's Bay for the duration required. The event transpired without any major incidents. Additional police were called into Hawke's Bay to ensure the safety of the community and to monitor traffic movement. Police minister confirmed that they had assigned 70 local staff and 30 from out of town to send a clear message that unlawful behavior would not be tolerated. Hawke's Bay Area Commander Lincoln Sycamore said police that antisocial or unlawful behavior and driving-related offending was not tolerated. Any such behavior met with enforcement action, whether at the time or after the fact. Overall, the response to the president's passing and the subsequent gatherings of mourners in Waipawa highlighted both the respect and unity within the mongrel mob community and the vigilance of law enforcement to maintain order. This period of mourning and remembrance for Sonny Smith not only honored his legacy but also illustrated the delicate balance between respect for community traditions and the enforcement of public safety. If you're looking for more exciting and eye-catching regular bikey updates, don't hesitate, smash that subscribe button, spread the word rapidly, hit that like button, share your thoughts in the comments section, and for the true grid Spartans out there, consider sending a super thanks to show some love. It goes a long way in keeping us motivated and the channel thriving, as most of the videos on this channel are not monetized due to its crime-related content. Stay tuned, stay curious, stay awesome and take care. Wu-Tang!